Next, we're going to look at more systems, electronic circuit systems for modeling, and we're going to look at circuits with op amps in them. So we're going to look at first an inverting op amp, and so this is our basic op amp, if you remember, and let's give some of these uh, values a name. So we're going to say that the input here is V1 of T, so this is the input signal, and just to remind you, this is from this positive voltage from this node to ground, which is, so to ground, so that's the voltage, V1. And then we're going to call this V out. And it's a signal in the time domain. And again, this is from this voltage to ground. So from here to there. All right, so how does this operational amplifier work? Well, remember it has a gain. And so the basic equation for this is that our V out of t is going to be equal to some gain times the difference of this voltage on this positive input minus the voltage of the negative input. So we're going to call that V positive of t minus V negative of t. So that's a general expression. And for this specific setup, we already know some values here. So we've connected the positive terminal to zero, so we know that this voltage here is zero. And we're calling the voltage at the negative node V1. So this is going to be V1 of T. Alright, so if we write that out, we have V out equals A times negative V1 of T. So that's just our general inverting amplifier. So now let's make a more interesting system. So if you remember, this is a common feedback method. You put some impedance here, call this Z2, and we're going to add an impedance of the input. So this is Z1. And now V1 is not our input. Actually, this voltage here, we're going to call it VI of T, from here, positive to ground. This is our input. And then this, V out, is our output. And if you remember how an amplifier in this setup works, it's set up with feedback, a feedback loop. And this in itself is a control loop, but we're actually assuming that this whole thing is the system. So we're just going to do the analysis of it. But with this setup, if you remember, the op amp does whatever it needs to do to make sure that this voltage is the same as this voltage. So what that means in this circuit is that this voltage will also be ground, it will also be zero. So with this setup, let's do some analysis. First I want to mention one thing. We have a voltage here, but what about the current? So we have a current coming in here, we'll call it I. And at this node, according to Kirchhoff's current law, the current going in here has to go into this op amp node and up through here. But the input impedance of the op amp is infinite. So it's like having an open circuit. So there's actually going to be no current going into this node, and all the current will go through the other impedance. So this is also I. So this is actually going to make everything a lot simpler for us as well. So we want to solve this system. So I'll write it over here. We want to solve GP of S. So this is our plant transfer function. And we've defined our inputs and outputs. So we want V out of S over V in, the I of S. So this is what we want to find. Again, we start with what we know. We know Ohm's law, so V equals IR. So let's do V equals IR for this first impedance. So V, we know, is the input voltage. And we subtract this voltage, V1, but we know that's zero. So we just leave it as V1, sorry, VI equals I here. These are all of T. I should be exact, times Z1, this is our impedance. Okay, great. What about this resistance? 
Well, we do the same thing. Now we have this voltage, which is zero, minus V out. So we have a negative V out of T equals I. And remember, this is the same current of T and Z2. So we want to make one single expression for this system, and we want it to be only in terms of V out and V in. Well, we notice that these two equations, if we equate the two currents, it will get rid of the currents and leave only V in and V out. So let's do that. So we'll just move some stuff around here, move the Z over here, and the same thing here. All right, and now we can equate these two together. So let's do that. Well, it's negative V out of T over Z2. All right, so we're almost there. We do want to end up in the frequency domain, so let's take the Laplace, and I'm going to draw it back over here. So we're taking the Laplace here. And we'll get V i of s over z1, and then that's equal to negative V out of s over z2. We're almost there. We just want it to look like this. So we can move everything around again. So move that down there, move that up there. We'll get, start writing it here, G p of s equals V out of s equals the i of s equals z1, z2, and a negative here. So this would be our transfer function for this op amps system. And the cool thing about this is that so z2 and z1 here are they can actually be general expressions for anything on this branch. So if we have a combination of capacitors, resistors, and uh, inductors, and we can figure out the impedance of this branch, we can just take that impedance, plug it into this equation, figure out the impedance here, plug it into here, and we already have our transfer function in a fairly nice form. So you'll be using this in uh, future equations, uh, future systems where you're looking at op-amps. So remember this.